Okay, we have started discussing how when we're learning about something, bringing in multiple sources can help us get a more complete picture. Because if we don't have multiple sources and we're missing information, sometimes we just make it up or we think we know what happened and we don't. So this piece of information is an article written for CNN. You can see that up here. And it's talking about the slave trade in Africa. Some of you were surprised to learn last week that slavery was not something new. There were Europeans who were slaves. There were Africans who were slaves. There were Middle Easterns who were slaves. And people would enslave people who looked like them for multiple um, reasons. And that slavery back then was sometimes very different than what we think of as slavery. Okay, so we're going to kind of skip down here. This just talks about how Africa played a part. It wasn't all the Europeans who came in and just took slaves out of Africa. And in fact, a lot of the African nations were so strong, Europeans would not have been able to do that. So let's just kind of skip down here to see what this says. It says, it was the Africans themselves who were enslaving their fellow Africans, sending them to the coast to be shipped outside. So we did read about that in the other passage a little bit. It said that they were trading um, guns and cloth and tools for slaves, but it, it wasn't necessarily clear maybe who was doing the trading. So there were Africans who were trading um, other Africans for um, those European goods, okay? So let's take a look at this a little bit closer, though, before we start coming up with some ideas and thinking about it, making sure we understand what's going on here said, um, European slave traders did not themselves capture slaves. They bought them from other Africans, usually kings or chiefs or wealthy merchants. The question is, why did Africans sell their own people? And I think that this is a question that you guys had uh, last week when you were reading that other information. So for thousands of years before Europeans arrived, slaves were commonly sold and taken by caravans north across the Sahara. So the Sahara is a desert in Africa. Um, and yeah, we did learn about this a little bit when we were learning about how there was slave trade all over the world at that time. And slavery did exist in Africa. Yes, just like it existed in Europe, in the Middle East, and all sorts of other places, and in the Americas. So in many African cultures, slavery was an accepted practice, but it was slavery of a different kind. And it also talked about this a little bit too. When we were reading that article, we noticed that the slavery that it talked about was different than the slavery that we think of. So in Africa, the slave usually had rights. So when we think of American slavery, the slave had no rights. So the slave usually had rights, protection under law, and were able to better themselves. So this is really interesting. And let's read down here. Many house owners would call their slaves as their daughters or sons. They became part of the kin or family lineage of the owners. So this was also mentioned in the other article the other day. So this is kind of interesting, too, because you say, well, why would they have slaves or why would they trade slaves? Well, you could say that their idea of slavery was very different than the type of slavery that the Europeans were going to be practicing once they brought these people to America. So the Atlantic slave trade grew at a time when many African states were at war with each other, taking prisoners that could easily be sold to slave traders in exchange for guns. So these aren't their own people, these are prisoners. So prisoners of war, basically. So it's not like Africans are saying, hey, take my brother as a slave so I can have a gun. It's not exactly what's happening. It's the gun which was the deciding factor in the slave trade. So this was kind of mentioned in the other article a little bit. Um, so then why is all this happening? Well, according to the other article in this article, it has something to do with the trade of the gun. It says it was a deciding factor. And in the other, other article we read yesterday, it said that um, trading for guns was kind of like the force behind the slave trade. And if I look, it says they traded slaves for guns. Soon groups all over West Africa were exchanging slaves for guns. So both of these articles are letting us know that. So that lets us know that guns are an important part of this. But while Africans may have sold their own people into slavery, researchers say the kings and chiefs had no idea of the horrible conditions of slavery on the other side of the ocean. If they had, they say, maybe the slave trade across the Atlantic would never have grown so huge or lasted for so many years. So without the ability to trade with the Africans for slaves, they might not have been able to take so many slaves out of Africa. But then on the other hand, if we go back up here and think about what we read in the other reading, is that the slavery in Africa was much, much different than the type of slavery that they would have when they would get to America. So in Africa, they had rights, protection under the law, and were able to better themselves. And when they got to America, the opposite was true. So it is possible 
that um, are highly likely, actually, since the Africans would not know what happened to the slaves that they sold across the ocean, that they did not understand the difference in slavery and maybe may not have participated if they knew. However, um, this kind of drive to get guns and to get power leads people to do things that they normally wouldn't do. So let's read this last thing here. It says, sharing the guilt for slavery may be disturbing and painful for Africans, but researchers say they are trying to teach something. They are trying to uncover the facts so that people will take a lesson from the evil of the past and say, no more. Now, I would like to say the same thing about us, too, that sometimes people complain, well, why do we keep talking about this? It was in the past. Well, because to understand our future, we have to understand our past, and we all have to take responsibility for what happened so that we can do so that we can fix it and we can make the world a better place so we don't want to ignore these things we don't want the you know the africans are saying that they shouldn't ignore these things and as um as people in the united states who who had whose ancestors brought these people over we don't want to ignore these things either we want to be able to take responsibility for them so that we can figure out how to make the world a better place so it says and there's one thing they insist they're not doing i'm not trying to shift blame or make europeans feel less guilty for, many believe, for what many believe was the world's greatest crime against humans, there is more than enough guilt to share. So this is not justification. So the fact that the Africans are part of the slave trade is not, we talked about that word the other day, justification for saying it was okay. It's understanding that greed and power can cause people all over the place to do things that we shouldn't. And how do we fix that?